Next is to consider proportional representation. What is proportional representation? Proportional representation works in this way. So you have a presidential election. So President Akufado runs for the MPP. John Dramani Mahama runs for the NDC. Pakwisi Indum runs for CPP and uh, uh, Bright Akwite runs for another party and Edward Mahama runs for PNC. They all run the election. Election results are published. Akufado gets 52%, John Mahama gets 40 something percent, whatever everyone gets. So if Akufado got 52% of the presidential election, and the proportional representation system, there will be no parliamentary election. We are not going to vote for any parliamentarians because we voted for the mayor. So we are not voting for parliamentarians. The candidate who wins 52% of the presidential vote will select 52% of the members of parliament. It's as simple as that. The person who has been elected president as 52%, he has the power to select 52% of the members of parliament. So we look at the numbers and then we select. John Dramani Mahama, come second, I'm talking about 2020. He gets 40 something percent. He selects 40 something percent of the people uh, in parliament. Paku Sindum, he gets 5%, he selects 5%. For those who are not president, who will not be president, they can select themselves. So John Dramani Mahama could have selected himself to be the leader of the NDC in parliament because he didn't win the presidential election. He's entitled to select himself because he's going to select that percentage. He and the party, if you like, not just him, he and his party, whatever arrangement they have. He can put himself in there. Papa Kwesindum, he gets 5%. That will encourage smaller parties because it will mean that whatever you get in the presidential election, you have some seats in parliament. So you go to the presidential election, you get 8%. That's big. 15, that's big. It encourages, encourages political parties and it helps the winning parties to be able to merge because you will not have one party dominating 50% all the time like we have in Ghana. In the European elections, you know, they always have to do coalition. They have the demerits of the coalition. But in a system where we are looking for caliber, and accountability, it will seem that the proportional representation works. So we think about proportional representation, we think about parliamentary system of government on independence, Day, that's a conversation. You gave an example of the current president, Ekufuado, for instance, winning 52% of the total vote cast. And so that gives them the power to appoint 52% of representatives. Now, doesn't that bring us back to another form of winner takes all because 52 percent represents an absolute majority mm -hmm. and so president ekufuad is going to see all his bills passed mm -hmm. because his party managed to grab as much as 52 percent in the elections so doesn't it look like it will only work for the citizens when a party is not able to cross the 50 percent threshold and when a party is able to cross it then we come back to a winner takes all form of i politics. see your point you're saying that if we do proportional representation so long as somebody's winning the presidential election he still has control over parliament yeah, a certain proportion yes yeah. once he has once you win 50 or 50 percent yeah. more than 50 percent control of parliament and therefore you don't need the other parties you can pass your bills yeah so the whole issue about working together is defeated yes please. i get that point i think it's a correct point but uh, the reverse of it is that you will have smaller parties who will have their voices heard and yeah. those smaller parties will grow you've seen what's happening in south africa with julius malema yes yeah. yes it's uh, what do they call it economic freedom economic fighters freedom EFF. EFF. yes yes yeah. yeah, economic EFF freedom EFF fighters EFF. people think they are mad but they are growing yeah. Yeah. the yeah. reason why they, they are growing so you see the julius malema example for instance he ran a presidential election yes he won a certain percentage he yeah. added himself to it to those yes. who are going to parliament yeah. he did mm. so, yeah, so that's the kind so he's there he's he's giving them a lot of fire and his party is growing and he has predicted that over the next two elections the eff will become the biggest party and they will have the government yeah. so you can have that kind of encouraging thing in ghana we've had very brilliant people set up small political parties christian mafo yeboa is one of them mm -hmm. set up a small political party it died because you go to the election and you get two percent and that's it the winner has taken all, so you are gone. So you are right about proportional representation can bring us back to square one, where you have a party winning. But it's unlikely in human endeavor that a particular party, given the opportunity for people to have representation in parliament, that one party will be winning like that. Because some Ghanaian voters go to the polls and they, they don't like NDC, they don't like MPP, but they vote anyway. Okay, they, so they are compelled to cast a vote because on voting days, like a frenzy, we are all voting. It, you, I can assure you that maybe 10% of the people who voted for either NDC or MPP they wish that they had another option. A third force. Yeah, and not that, not because the third force will win, but because the third force will now create a voice and will create a catalyst in the whole situation and are powerful enough. So if you vote for a third force and you get 10% of 275, uh, that's over 20. 27.5. Yes, that's 27.5. Yes, great, smart. So you have a third force who wins the election and is going to appoint 27.5 MPs who are going to be in committees 
that's going to enrich the conversation. Yeah. It's going to make the debate sharper. So that's okay. that's that's okay, the, so that's you the think other that side. It is going to break the monopoly of the it, two party. It should. The steaming it, two parties. Over is over time, them. with what we are doing, you're going to have you're going to have the two parties win for a very very long very time. Long it's, not, time. It's, not, it's not going to change. And and uh, um, yes, it's not, it's not, it's not. But, but with the principle of separation of powers, mm -hmm. where we try as much as possible to divide the executive from the legislature and the judiciary. In this instance, you would have the head of the executive being the leader in parliament mm -hmm. who would appoint his colleague MPs. Don't you think it would be... No, uh, the head of executive, are you talking about the British system? Are you talking about... I'm talking about what we are trying. What we are, we are discussing. We are if discussing. we have professional representation, yeah. we are also saying that we want accountability. Yes. Yeah, so we have to then decide on the hybrid. The same hybrid that produced the, the fourth Republican constitution. We have to look at proportional representation in South Africa or in France. Um, the parliamentary accountability in Britain. We need both. We, we, it looks like we need both. We need better caliber of people and we also need proportional. That, that is from proportional representation. We need accountability. That's from this. So let's fashion out. Let's, it's, it's, it's time for thinking. Independence Day is time to think. I mean, if you are 65 years old as independence and you are in the situation that we are in, it calls for a lot of thinking. Yeah. Not because we are bad, but some little things have gone wrong. Not because somebody decided to do anything wrong, but the superstructure has to change for, for the things to happen. Otherwise, things are not going to happen. And the election of DC thing that I talked about, you know, as I said, the people built the thing for Accra to London. So the reason why we always hear that Hollywood City Hospital is looking for 30,000 cities to go and buy something they can't get. It's not because Ghana doesn't have 30,000 cities. It's because where the 30,000 cities is, there's no dotted line to Kolebu's need. Mm -hmm. That's the problem of our country. The money is here, the need is here, there's no connection. Yeah. You can bridge that connection by electing your mayors and having the, the, the mayors control education, health, and other things within the, the community. So if Kolebu is found in, in Akram mayor's context and the Akram mayor is controlling that, then when the money comes in, Kolebu know exactly where to go for the money. Today, if Kolebu need 90,000 CDs to buy something, they can't go to the Akram mayor. Yeah. They have to go to Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, which is dealing with 30 million people, That's which is job. dealing with a million hospitals, which is, has to go and look for the money for Ministry of Finance. But some of that money may have come from Kolebu itself. Yes. Some of the money may have come from, some of the money that's our Ministry of Finance that is going to do something somewhere else may have come from Kolebu itself. It may have come from Konfanoche itself. So, so increase if, access. if it's a school, there's a school in any locality in Ghana today, and the school is in trouble, they can't go and ask the DC. He doesn't control education there. Yeah. Education is controlled by the Ghana Education Service. It's a humongous elephant. It sits in Accra near the stadium at the Ministry of uh, Education. They sit there, it, it's complicated. He can't help it. He's not a bad person, but he's sitting down, Ghana Education Services in Accra, he has district officers all over the place. Nobody is taking the responsibility because the responsibility is all in Accra. So Ben Koko Mayor is disappointed by the president, that's all, that's it. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for Common Fund, which is also Come. sitting in Accra. He's not allowed to say that. Here in Nkoko, if you pack a taxi here, I don't care what Accra thinks. I will charge you 500 cities. And every day he's getting 10,000 cities from the ground of people packing. He goes into the market and says, in this market, if you do this, I will charge you this. You can't come here. Any taxi that comes in Koko must be painted yellow. You can't paint your taxi like Accra does. It's yellow. And he's collecting that. The people of Koko know that this is our man. He is responsible for the things we do. It doesn't affect the presence in Accra. When something happens in Koko, they don't call the presence in Accra. So they are raising their own money by different means. People decide that I want to stay in Tema because it's cheaper to live there than to live in Teshi or to live in Labadi because they have different rules of where the people live. So until we do that, we will never find the 40,000 for Kolebu. And Facebook will be awash with people blaming the authorities and saying that you people are buying land cruises. And so you ask yourself, how do we find money to buy cars for parliamentarians? which is millions and millions and millions. Oh, and we don't find money to fix rich hospital when they need 40,000 cities. If they need 40,000 cities today, and the 40,000 cities is not in the hospital, they, they, they have to write to Ghana Health Service. Even the letter will take two days to finish yeah. and all that. They don't have any controlling executive who has wallets that they can go to and say, hey, we are in trouble. They don't. But the reason why we can get the money for parliamentary, because it's coming from the Ministry of Finance, is the big ticket money. 
they are doing everything they are passing all the bills so it looks like a priority yeah. so you have to pay them the other one but the minister of finance will not even hear it if parliamentarians need a car the minister of finance will hear it because he's working with them the president will know that parliamentarians need car because he's working with them if uh, uh, a Jusumai JHS need a television set, the president will not hear it. By the time he hears it, it's social media. Sure. Even if he hears it, what is he going to do about it? How, how does he, he's going to call the regional minister, he's going to call this, he's going to, he can't immediately provide. But if a minister is in trouble, the president can immediately provide because he's working with him. So until we break that centralization of our money issues and allow the localities to raise their own money. So for instance, they want to pass e-levy. Ashanti Regional Mayor may decide that for me here in Ashanti, I'll put mechanisms in place. Once you enter my territory and your phone beeps that you're in Kumasi, your e levy is 100%. Accra can charge what they want me, I don't care. e levy is 100%. The people, are going to, the people of Kumasi are going to hold him accountable to it. That you are charging us e levy 100% and people visitors who come here must pay 100%. You have to show us what you are doing with the money, else they will vote you out. Mm -hmm. And he knows that they will vote him out. He's clear about that. He's not, he's not confused about it. So he charges 100% for his e-levy. You go to Kumasi and it has changed. And Takwadi people are putting pressure on Takwadi and Mayor Ravizi what's happening in Kumasi. Yes, and then he's telling about Kumasi, they pay. So, okay, we also pay for the same thing. And that way you are developing the country very quick. But without that, and we are still doing this president appointing 260 mayors. We're out. It's not going to work. So on Independence Day as young people, we need to look at that very hard and tell the politicians that, look, you may not like where the suggestion came from, but we need to do this. You talk about the bill, which is, which is a good suggestion. How, how are we going to fund it? Because yeah. you have to run elections, and elections mm -hmm. are expensive. Yeah. So you run elections in 275 constituencies every four years. Then every two years, you're going to run 261 One districts yeah. uh, on bipartisan basis. So you have NDC, MPP, and all of that. Yeah. That's an interesting conversation. I have not looked at that. So we can look at it and see how it works because it means every two years. But it also gives jobs to young people. So if I'm going to run for mayor of uh, Ayawaso West Wogon, I can ask you to come and assist me. It's a job. Yeah, it's a and so in America, you see that young graduates start by working as political advisors to these people. Yeah. And then they grow into it. Here, we don't have that because we, we don't have the elections that require a lot of ingenuity. Okay. So the elections go on and the, the elections is the big ticket, Akufado versus John Mahama. And that's how everything else is interpreted. But we cannot continue to interpret our elections in the NDC and the MPP candidates. There may be some brilliant guy somewhere who is doing great. And we need to look at him. Like Julius Malema. He's not the big ticket of the, of the, yeah. of the big two parties, yeah, but he's doing great. All our elections is defined in the NDC, the MPP, and their candidates. And that devolves down to the rest of the people. It's only in 2020 that we have been able to elect a parliamentary system that has 137, 137. You know, which was great. I, I've always said that's great for our democracy. Uh, I don't know whether it's beneficial, but it shows that we have come very, very far. So, so I like that. You know, so it's, it's, uh, yeah. and, and an example it's is in even in South Africa. You know, they also do the system, and Johannesburg is governed by the ANC, but Cape Town is governed by the DA, mm -hmm. and the DA is the opposition, one of the opposition parties, but they are predominantly. European mm -hmm. and a lot of people try and compare Cape Town and Johannesburg and they say that ah but look Cape Town is cleaner Cape mm -hmm. Town is more organized Cape Town is because rather the largest criticism of the ANC in South Africa is that they have sort of betrayed and um, they've trust. moved away from yes what's Nelson Mandela fought for and that's why even the EFF I don't know if you it's, remember it's growing, yeah. Julius Malema's speech during um, Winnie Mandela's funeral yeah and he made mention of that so I think it is it is good even though that means that every two years we'd have to have political atmosphere. That's, that's a problem. That's a problem. That, that, that one you raised, that's, that's a yeah. genuine problem. I don't like that, but I don't know how we're going to go around that because that's going to be massive. Yeah. And you made the point that it starts a year before. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so like for, for the four year years. Round. For the four years, we are in, we are in, we're in political mode. Yeah. Yeah. But, that but some, of the mayor, some of the mayor elections will be one sided. You can understand that. Yeah. Shanti region will be one sided, Volta, Volta region will be one sided. So that gives us a little bit of. You know, the, the big ones are going to be Accra. Accra. It's going to be fought for. The N NPP will believe they can do something in Tamale, but at this rate, Tamale will most likely fall for the NDC. Uh, Upper East Upper West will go to the NDC. Takrade will be a big place to contest. Mm -hmm. Tema has a lot of money, a lot of business there. It will be a big seat to contest. And these days, Tema is becoming competitive. It used to be the MPPs, but these yeah. days it's becoming very competitive. So because we may have 
uh, a whole region like Ashanti, which will be one-sided, and another big region like Volta and parts of Oti, which will also be one-sided. It will reduce the uh, thing a little bit. Yeah, because this is, this is a winner, uh, first past the post. First past. Yes. You see, in the national election, it is also one-sided. But the national election is not first past the post. Um, 50% plus one. plus one. And the whole country for the presidential election is one constituency. So if you are in Ashanti and you can fight for 30%, it means something in the total reckoning of, of, of the results. Mm -hmm. So, so that, doesn't, that, 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 will, that, that works. For the district level elections, you win, you win. You lose, you lose. So it's not what happens here does not add up to what happens here. Effect. So those two regions will probably bring down the, the political activity around. I'm just, I just thought about it. But it's something we have to think about. And okay. so maybe we could legislate to ensure that campaigns don't drag. Because in the UK, their campaigns don't last more than a month. A month, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So we could do that. That's, that's a solution. You know, as we start yeah. thinking solutions come. We can decide that for the district assembly elections, public campaigns. So they can do the yes, secret ones. Social media. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> private ones. Yeah. And the subtle so, ones. Yeah, you so I think that after 65 years, um, it should be easier for us to implement a new hybrid as you are proposing because the whole beauty of copying is that you get to know people's strengths, people's weaknesses. And so when UK experimented this, where, what was their shortfalls? When South Africa experimented this, what were their strengths? And so we sit down with experts as you propose again. Who will go through the strengths and weaknesses of um, the other places where it's been experimented so that ours can be more of a perfect system? So we have a system that fits our context perfectly. That's what we it's did. It's not now that hybrid. we are going That's to... what we did with the hybrid and uh, I mean we still have to be grateful to those who did it. Yeah. That's what we did try to do with the hybrid even though we produced a lot of the 1979 yeah, we in 1992. Yeah, but this one will require a lot of thinking. I mean if young people think this is the way we should go, it will work and I think that we can put pressure on the existing authority. President Akufado is already looking at an amendment which he withdrew. We can ask him to include um, other uh, expert advice mm -hmm. on other aspects of the constitution. Maybe we can, we can have a change. I also think for the, la the last one, this is the last bit, shouldn't we have our members of parliament, uh, parliamentary representation standardized to say that uh, each constituency should be 100,000, not more. Uh, not less, sorry, not less. not less, not less, but it could be more. So that we can probably bring down the 275 number and have representation. Josiah Ayer, who was a famous lecturer at the Faculty of Law, he ran for parliament. He was, he was in England for a long time, Professor Mills brought him back. And in 2004, he ran for parliament at uh, Accra. That's uh, the next to the audio, is the one that is occupied by Oko Van der Poy today. Mm -hmm. That's Ablikuma South. Ablikuma South, yeah. correct. Uh -huh. He was Ablikuma South. At that time, it was, it was uh, bigger than today. At that time, it included Dansuman. So that's West. Ablikuma West. Yes, yeah, so it included West and South, was mm -hmm. one constituency. Okay. And uh, Theresa Amele Tego was the MP. Okay. Yeah. And uh, she defeated Josiah Ayer okay. in 2004, I believe. Okay. Well, she and, died. Uh, she died. Both, both of them are dead. Both they Josiah the, and Amelie died. They raised the monument for her there. The yes. Yeah, because she was, a big, she was a big MPP stalwart, yeah. uh, Amelie Tego. May she rest in peace. And Josiah Ayer, great lecturer of, of uh, property law, he complained after the election as an NDC person. He had just come from London, Professor Mills brought him. He complained after the election and said that he had won 35,000 votes and lost to Amele Tego, who won 48,000 anyway. John Dramani Mahama had won 7,000 votes in Bole Bamboy and was elected to parliament as the winner of the seat. And he had won 35,000. And he was Sometimes. lamenting the process that, ah, how, you know, he had just come from London, so we used to laugh at him that he's doing your bruni, bruni things. <laughs> he was saying that, but in London, this doesn't happen. How can he win 35,000 when he saw his results? He got 35,000 who voted for him. 48,000 voted for Amelie Tegu. So it was a, a landslide victory. But he says, ah, can John Mahama come to parliament with 7,000? But that was the distribution at the time. John Mahama hasn't done anything wrong. He just won the Bolivar boy seat. People tell us that the seat in the north, even though the numbers may not sound like as many, the distances are very wide. And so covering all the communities can be significant in terms of cost, in terms of time, in terms of people, it may, they think it may be the same as a densely populated area like we are talking about Ablikuma South and Ablikuma West, where you can reach everybody. Within 100 meters, you've reached 10,000 people. Another 100 meters, you've reached another 10,000 people. So, but then if you look at the figures in parliament in terms of representation, 
some people are being shortchanged because that's why I think you have constituencies like uh, Lejokuku in Teshi, mm -hmm. where you, nobody wins twice mm -hmm. because there are about 180,000 people who are voting. Are not going to be, in, in four years, you're not going to reach all of them. Yeah. Some people are going to say he's never been here. We always hear that he's never been here. He's never, never happy to Okoboy. If we've not seen him, he's never been here since he was elected. He's never been here. You lose the, the seat. So Ledger Kuku has had to be changing every four years. And they, they kind of feel proud of it that they change MPs. What it means though is that the quality of service they are getting is reducing in parliament because every uh, term, every four year term, they're ushering in a new member of parliament who's going to start from the back bench anyway. And so his influence in doing things. So every day they are going to be marking time from the back men because they are always electing people. That comes about when they have so many people in one constituency. And Ledger Koko should be divided just as other constituencies should be merged. Yeah. So that's another conversation I think we can have around so, the Independence Day table. Yeah, I, I want to agree with you on the basis that um, when, we have, when we hold referenda, and my constituency has just about 10,000 people. 10,000? Yes, and your constituency has about 150,000 people. Now, we come, you come to, I go to my constituency to get their opinion, and then they vote to reject something. So I come to parliament and say, my people don't want this. Mm -hmm. Then you go to your people and, no, let's, let's take that, my people accept it. Now, yes, they are the just a little over 10,000. Mm -hmm. And your people are about 150,000. Mm -hmm and they object. About 100,000 people say no. Mm -hmm. And we have about 10 of you in parliament saying no. And you have about 15 of people like me in parliament saying yes. Now, fewer people are deciding for the majority. Yeah, yeah that's what it's going to be. Because they have yeah. representation in the parliament. The tyranny of the minority. Exactly. That's so, very interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. so then it is laudable that we put a cap, we have a base number of people, you know, that's that is a person So we represents. know that each constituency is at least 100,000. 100,000. Then we can move Because, of course, MPs are not the main people responsible for development in such areas. They are lawmakers. And so they don't need to even have proximity to say that, oh, if I'm MC for this place and the place is sparsely populated and, um, what do you call it, the land area is big, I may not be able to cover. But I'm an MP, I'm a lawmaker, I just need to be able to reach them to agree or disagree. It is an MC at DC who oh, needs, it's... you know, a sizable land area to be able to implement development. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think that there should be a base number of people that a person represents in Parliament mm -hmm. so that we avoid, as you said earlier, the tyranny of, of the, the minority. minority. That's interesting. You have something to add that we are wrapping up. Oh, one. Yes, I think that's also a, a very salient point. Um, even though there are issues of eth ethnicity that mm -hmm. may come. Some regions may feel that is against yeah. them. Exactly. Yeah, because exactly. they have fewer members of exactly. parliament with fewer numbers. If you are, that, that was even the dispute. I don't know if you remember before independence when the NLM felt that the Ashanti and the Bronx now, Bono and then half regions were being shortchanged mm -hmm. of, of seats. But the plus side is that now there's more integration mm -hmm. as opposed to first. There there is, yeah. So cultural movements have indicated that yes. tribal representation does not only happen in the region, the original region mm -hmm. of the of the person, but it can happen anywhere else. So there are seats in Accra that you have to come from another tribe other yes. than a tribe in Accra yes. to be able to yes. win it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, 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 and like Dansuman and other places, is Holy Akan, you have places where it's Ewe, and there are places where it's Northern, even in Accra. So. So we can think about that and then yeah. maybe by the time we come to independence number 66, we'll be able to have uh, some changes. Some changes. Do you changes. think about even constitutional amendments? Do you think it's a bit too stringent? No, no I think we should have the constitutional I, I hope that the Naya Kufado will consider adding some amendments to the one that he's already identified. Well, I, but I mean, the process of amendments, don't you think it's a bit too tough? You know, the, for instance, the entrenched clauses. For, for now, we can't change anything. We will have to vote to a change the entrenched clauses. Change. So we can vote to change the process of amendment if we like. If we, okay. But if we're serious about taking our country forward to be able to develop and deliver the, the expectations of democracy, we need to do something about the yeah. superstructure. The, the earlier, the better, because yeah. Gradually, we are having a lot of young people who think that when their party is in power, it is an avenue for them to, let me say, eat as much as they can. And so, I'm coming to power, I'm coming to grab this and that and that. And so, the earlier we reduce the powers that the executive has, the better for all of us. Otherwise, we are going, to, going forward, you're going to have, you know, people in power who are going to be, as we got appointments, putting people who 
are not cut out for the job, but then you have to satisfy party boys, and so we're going to be eating from left to right center. Party girls too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was our Independence Day conversation. Thank you that you listened. Uh, let's see your text messages. Oh!